Good morning, good morning to all of you. Good morning, good morning. Come on in the room, come in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you. Come in the room. The Lord is great. He is powerful. He is mighty. Yes, good morning to all of you. Come in the room. It is time for us to give the Lord our first and our best praise. Time for us to magnify the Lord. Time for us to bless his name for he is great. Good morning to all of you. That's right. Come in the room. Let me know that you are here, that you plan to bless the Lord with me this morning. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Good morning to you, Sister Cynthia. Good morning to you, Sister Nora. Good morning to you, Sister Mary. God bless all of you that are coming in the room, that are joining us. Listen, I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer really quickly. And then we're going to get right into what the Lord has for us on this morning. Father God, I just bless you. I praise you, O oh God, for you are powerful and you are mighty, God. You are wonderful, Lord God. You continue to bless us, O oh God. And God, and you didn't stop this morning. Lord God, you blessed us. You woke us up this morning, Lord God, that we could see this brand new day. These brand new mercies that you've given us, O oh Lord God. You are faithful to your word. And Lord, because you are faithful to your word, O oh God, we thank you that you've allowed us, God, even to hear a word from you this morning that we can open our eyes and see, Lord God. And Lord God, if we want to get up and walk around, Lord we have the activity of our limbs that we were able to do that. So Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for this word that it will touch our hearts and our spirits and it will bless us, oh Lord God, to move us from one place, God, to the next place that we will have and always have victory in you. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning to all of you. Good morning and bless the Lord for what it is that God is doing in our lives on today. The Lord continues to bless us. He continues to heal us and he continues to do such great and mighty and powerful things for all of the children of God. Yes, this morning, this, oh, this morning, glory to God. This morning, I'm getting some music for you this morning. This morning, yes, I was meditating on the Lord just really about our readiness, about our readiness to do what God has called for us to do, yes. And really thinking, you know, ready, set, go. We've, over the last few days, have been talking about building and in us talking about building, now it is time for us to get to the place where we now can do some work. So a lot of times the, the Lord gives us some words of preparation and um, we have those words of preparation or those those instructions that we've give, been given. But a lot of times we, um, the, whether we, you know, whether, you know, we get something else happens or we get distracted um we have those words of preparation but we really don't do anything with them have you ever yeah ready set go have you ever sister nimby been in a place or not just sister nimby but everybody have you ever been in a meeting and you 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 start doing all these wonderful you have all these wonderful plans and you know you got committees set up and you got subcommittees set up and then you know everybody has their instructions to go off and do something and then you know you know, two or three months later, maybe you come together and then everybody says, okay, what did you get your project done? Did you get your part done? And then you find that people are saying, oh, well, you know, this, this and that happened and life happened and, and I wasn't able to get this done. And so out of all that planning and strategizing that you did, nothing, nothing came of it. And so this morning I hear the Lord saying, listen, I've, I've given you some instructions. Now it's time for us to get, get moving. We are prepared to make the move. We are prepared to do what it is that God has called for us to do. Now we have to get ourselves in order. I'm looking at a scripture right now from Ephesians chapter um, 4. Um, here the word of the Lord is saying, therefore the prisoner, I th therefore the prisoner of the Lord, Paul is talking here, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. Walk worthy of the calling to which you were called. And with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. As we talk about building, you know, one of the things that um, I want to share, you know, sometimes when we start to do something new and start to do something different, glory to God, we, um, we, we sometimes veer off from doing what God called us to do to doing, look, look, looking at what other people are doing. So this morning, I want us to focus not on what other people are doing, not focusing on, on anybody else's business, but focusing on the business that God has for you. So as we're building the business of God, we're building the kingdom of God, let us be mindful that that is the business that God has has put our hands to do. So it says, Paul is saying here, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. He's, he says, I'm, I'm in bondage, but I'm in bondage to God. I beseech you that you walk worthy, walk worthy. He said, I'm, I'm begging you, I'm asking you that you walk worthy worthy of this calling um, that you were called. So he's saying, I'm giving you some instructions. So now that you have, you know what it is that you need to do. 
Now I'm giving you some instructions as far as how it is that you need to do it. How do you maintain your sales? Yes, as you're walking out this this um this assignment that I've given to you. Good morning to you, Sister Linda, Brother Armand. Let me greet some people that I'm that are here. Sister Linda, Brother Armando, Sister Mary, so good to see you this morning. All of you that I didn't greet while I was in prayer. I just want to know that um that I, that I love you. I want you to know that I love you. And I so much appreciate you joining. Sister Sharice, you are joining real early in the morning. So I so much appreciate you joining this meditation. So here we see there is a challenge. So there is a challenge for all of us to move. There's a challenge for all of us to do. Yes, and even, yes, so you've received those instructions. Let's not sit down on them. And so just as Paul is challenging, he's challenging the church in this particular passage of scripture. He's saying, I've got some, some work for you to do. So maybe he's saying, you know, there's a, there is a point, um, and maybe I'll talk about this at some other point. There was a point that um, Paul was saying, you know, you all started out really good. You, you started out running fast. You know, you, you knew the word of God. You had the instruction. You had the baton, and you were running with it. You were like the, you know, the first and second leg. He said, but by the time you got to the third and fourth leg, Paul said, I was like, who hindered you? What stopped you? What kept you from moving forward in the things of God? And people in, in 2022, we cannot allow anything to stop us. We can't allow anything to block us. We can't allow anything to hinder us. We can't allow anything to turn us around. And so if this 20, 2022 message for you of building is a different direction, if if this 2022 message for you is a message of getting up and working together with somebody, if this 2022 message of, of coming together with one another, coming to your churches and helping to build up the kingdom of God, if that's a different message for you, if that's a different direction for you, you got to recognize this is something that God wants you to do. So you can allow anybody to talk you out of it. You can allow your mind to listen to things that, have, that you have thought from the past. You can allow those things to keep up. Uh, um, 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 hindering the walk that God has for you. This is, this is what Paul is saying. He says, the walk that God has for you, I beseech you to walk worthy of that walk. God has called for you to do a certain thing and you can't allow anybody, anything, no, no persons, no situations to stop you from doing that. And so what he's saying, he says, I'm challenging you. And just as Paul is challenging the, the church here, I'm challenging you, the people of God. I'm challenging you, the church of God. I'm, I'm challenging you, the house of God. Listen, because we recognize and understand that when I'm talking about building the house, I'm not talking about building four walls. I'm talking about building you because the God lives inside of you. So therefore, you are the house of God. You are, you, the people of God. We are the houses of God. And therefore, we need to build ourselves up. So I'm challenging you to build the house of God, but I'm challenging you to be intentional about that build. And so here, as we look at Ephesians chapter four, here, here, uh, the, the words coming from Paul and he's saying, listen, ba based on the things that we've done before, based on what we've talked about before, now I want you to do something because of what you know, because of who you know God to be. You know him to be king of kings and you know him to be Lord of lords. You know that God has given something great and mighty in your hands. You know because of what I've already talked about over these last few days. You know that God has told you to be courageous. You know that God has said that he will never leave you. You know that God has said wherever you go, he's going to go with you. You know that God has he's already shown you over these last two years that he's going to be with you through the fire through the flood. He's going to be with you through the pandemic. God has already shown you that even in times of famine, he's going to still feed you. God has already shown you he's going to still clothe you. He's going to still allow you to have resources that you can feed and clothe your families. So he's already shown you some mighty miracles, things that you didn't even understand or even think that was going to happen. The Lord has already shown you that even when others, my God, were struggling with what they were going to do, struggling for how they were going to feed their children. Listen, he's he said, I gave you abundance. He said, I gave, I've given you even more than you had before we went through this terrible situation in the world. He said, God has even shown you that miracles are still happening and abounding in the earth realm today. He said, not only are they moving and abounding, he said, but you are a part of those miracles. And so Paul here is saying now, because of all of that, he says, I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you, my God, as you are prepared, as Lord has prepared you to do a work. Now I'm challenging you to do that work. Because the 
what we're saying here is, Paul is saying is that you have been chosen. Glory to God. People of God, you have been chosen. The Lord chose you. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter one, verse number four, he chose you before the foundation of the world. He chose us to be in Christ. He chose us to be victorious. He chose us to be overcomers, even from the very beginning of time, even before we were even born, he chose us. As a matter of fact, not only has he chose us, that he's, but he's given us all spiritual blessings. Oh my God, through Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, he said it. It's said in his word. He has chosen us and he's given us and equipped us everything that we need in order to be successful in him. But you know, the one thing that he gave us, that God gave us to make sure that we were going to be successful, and that is Jesus Christ who came to forgive us when we listen, when we would fail or when we would fall, when we needed that forgiveness. And because of that, the Lord says, my God, you can, yes, all of us, glory to God, I not know it, absolutely every last one of us can be my God like the Lord one day. Why is that? Because he said we were created in his image and in his likeness, glory to God. The Bible says we were my God created. Do you believe that? Sometimes I don't think that we actually believe, glory to God, that we were even created like him because we act real crazy, don't we? We don't act like we were created like him. We don't, we don't behave like we were created like him. Glory to God. Yes, my God, we don't. Oh, um, yeah, it's time for us to begin to recognize that, listen, once we have been prepared on your mark, get ready, get set, go. Or oh, you all did that when you were children on your mark. He said, on your mark, get on your mark. Get in the position that I've called for you to be. Get ready. My God, my God. Yeah, I was just reading out of Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, where it said, yep, yeah, uh, well, I go to three. It says, blessed be the God of, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every, I mean every, spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And why does it say that? Having predestined us to the adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Listen, we are in his family. We belong to him. He's preparing us to do a great work. He chose you to do that work, my God, for him. Good morning to you, Sister Avis. Good morning to you, Elder Gail. Good morning. He chose us to do that work. And because he chose us to do that work, he prepared us to do that work. Now, we know the instructions. We know, my God, what he's called for us to do. Oh, oh there's, there should be no stopping us. It is time for us to do that work. He, uh, he, has, he has made us to be accepted in him. Yes, if you look through the, the entire first chapter of Ephesians, you will see what God has done. Yes, in your life. He, the blood of Jesus Christ washes us from our sins. And listen, the Bible says that when we were yet dead in our sins, when we were going to hell, God reached out. God sent Jesus Christ to save us, to heal us, to love us. And what did he do? He gave us life again. What am I saying? What I'm saying is because the Lord did all of that for us. Oh my God, he gave us an assignment. It's surely that assignment we ought to be able to do on his, my God, on his behalf. Glory to God. You have a new life. You have a new life in him. And he, what, what, what is he asking us to do? He's asking us to build. He's asking us to build. You are prepared now. You are ready to do a work for Jesus Christ. You are prepared yeah, and Paul, and Paul is saying in that scripture, he said, therefore, he used that word, therefore, because of all of these things that I've shared with you, all these things that, that most of us already know, we already knew about the Lord Jesus Christ. We already knew how, what he had done for us. We already knew who he created us to be. We already knew, my God, that with him all things are possible. We already knew that he has a desire to bless us. We already knew about the grace and the mercy that he given to us. We already knew about the brand new compassions that he gives us. My God, every day. Listen, that makes, makes me more strong and powerful in him. That just builds me up in him to know who he is and what he has done on my behalf. And now what he's saying now, and he says, I'm challenging you. Yeah. He says, therefore, because of all of that, I'm, I'm telling you now. You, you recognize and you understand now it's time for us to do. It's time for us to get to work. 
So no more of the meetings and, and, and loving to hear what, what the men, the women of God are saying. Yeah. Now it's time for us to be doers, doers of that word. That's a scripture in the Bible that talks about being a doer of the word. Maybe I'll find it before I leave off this, off this meditation. But there's a scripture that talks about us being a doer of the word and not hearers only. Yeah, doers, doers of the word and not hearers only. We have to recognize that, listen, as we, as we hear the word of God, as we know the word of God, it's found in James. I see it, James chapter 1, verse 22, it says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was is like the people in the meeting who hear all the information, hear all the instructions, have all the strategy, have all the plans, Sister Nimby, but then they walk out and they don't do what it is that they've been instructed to do. People of God, let us not be that way. Let us, my God, let us use what it is that we've been learning. Ready, set, go. Yeah, yeah. We readied ourselves. We put ourselves in a position, yes, as a disciple, as a man or woman, woman of God, that God can use us. We put ourselves in a position where we can truly, truly hear from God. Yes, we put ourselves in a position, yes, where we know that the enemy cannot harm us because we are set in a place where we are beside, yes, right there with God. Yeah, God is in front, God is in back, he's on the side, he's on the top, and he's on the bottom. He's all in us. And so Paul here is saying this, and now I'm I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you by the mercies of God. Yeah, he says that in Romans chapter 12. Not only that, not only does we walk worthy, what is walking worthy? Walking worthy is that we're presenting ourselves as a, as a living sacrifice. We're giving ourselves over to the Lord. That whatever it is that God has asked us to do, building our house, giving our house, presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. The Bible says, which is our reasonable service, our reasonable worship. Paul knows, listen, that many people, just like we know, and all of us have gone through these situations, this, this, uh, this, this pandemic situation. We've gone through a difficult time. We've gone through times of change and times of uncertainty over these last couple of years. And many people have forgotten who God is. Many people have forgotten what God has done out of the times of despair and out of the times of, of, of frustration and famine and lack. Oh my God. Many people have forgotten that God still is on the throne. Many people have forgotten that. And, and that is why my God, it is time for the churches to be rebuilt. The churches of our heart. It is time for us as a people of God to be rebuilt. But so Paul here is saying, listen, we had to know that we have to bring back to, to, to our houses, right living, righteous living, proper doctrine and the things of God. We got to come to a place, my God, where we are understanding what God taught us again. Come back to a place. Oh yeah. I said, ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. We understood it, but now you got to get back in a position where you are ready, my God, to take that baton again, that third and fourth leg. Yeah. That, that we got hindered back in 2020, that we were hindered or we moved and we veered off of the path. Matter of fact, we got out of the, oh my God, some of us got out of the race. We got out of the race altogether. But Paul here is saying, listen, we got to redirect ourselves. Ah, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. It's like that GPS. When you get, when you got your GPS on and, and my God, and, and you're trying, and you're going a certain way and all of a sudden you get off course. What your GPS says, redirect, redirect. Yes, re redirecting. It's redirecting you. But my God, after a while, I don't know. You, you got to get yourself back on course because it tries to get you back on course so they can get you to the place where you need to be. The Spirit, Holy Spirit is saying to me this morning, we got to get ourselves back to the place where we need to be so that we can build the kingdom of God, build the house of God, build my God on a firm foundation. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. Because as long as we got holes in our doctrine, holes in what we think, we don't believe that we need God and we don't believe that God is real and we don't believe that God will work out a situation. Those are holes in your doctrine. Every time you will be, you will be redirected every time people have God, as long as you are listening to the spirit of the power of God. But we've got to know, my God, that, that we're 
Paul here is challenging the church. He's challenging them to get back on their job, get back on their task. I'm challenging you this morning to get back what it, to where it is that God has called for you to be, where you are serving him, serving him with gladness and serving him with your whole heart. Get back to my God, that task. So here, Paul is saying, listen, the, the challenge is for him, the challenge is personal because Paul said, listen, I, he said, I the prisoner of God, he said, I beseech you. Paul says, I'm making this personal. He says, I'm talking to every one of you, every last one of you. He said, even if you think that you've been doing a good job, even if you think that you've been doing a, a, a half job, even if you think, my God, that you're not doing anything at all. Paul is saying, I'm challenging each and every one of you to come alongside me. Listen to the instruction that you've been given so that we can strengthen one another. Yes, he says, I'm encouraging you. I'm challenging you to now begin to walk the right path. He says, I'm challenging you, my God. He says, as I comfort you, he said, in the place that I'm in, he said, I'm in a place of despair. He said, but I'm challenging you to comfort one another as I'm comforting you. He says, I'm challenging you to lead one another as I'm leading, one, uh, leading you. He says, I'm challenging you to be one another's friend as I'm being, as I'm being your friend. He says, I'm challenging you, my God, to pray for one another as I'm praying for you. Listen, people of God. I'm doing the same this morning. I'm challenging you that as we build the house of God, as we build the people of God, as we, oh my God, as we come together building the kingdom of God. I'm challenging you to love one another as I'm loving on you. I'm challenging you to pray for one another as I'm praying for you. I'm challenging you to comfort one another as I comfort each and every one of you. I'm making this personal, people of God. I am Tina Patton, the minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am challenging you to speak the truth to one another so the truth my God can set you free as I am challenging as I am speaking the truth to you I am challenging you my God this morning to encourage one another Paul said listen let us walk worthy of the calling my God you have been called to do a certain my God thing a special thing in the body of Christ the body of Christ might be built up I'm challenging you my God yes just as Timothy did to stir up every gift and talent and ability in you that you might use that to build up, my God, the body of Christ. I am, glory to God, challenging you. Oh, there's a scripture. Yeah, 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 there is. My God, there is a scripture. My God, because here John 14 through 16 through 18, it says the very same thing. It says, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that you may abide with you. It will forever. Even the spirit of truth that the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. What is he saying? He said, listen, the Holy Spirit is coming. Oh, my God. I am ex I'm challenging you, my God, to receive the Holy Spirit, my God, that you, my God, will be led and guided and directed. Yeah, I talked about that GPS a few minutes ago. Because sometimes, my God, when we want to go our own way, that is why we need to be redirected all the time. Listen, we don't want to listen to what the Spirit is trying to say. We don't want to be led by the, the guiding of the Lord, but the Holy Spirit has come, my God, to lead and to guide us. Sister Marilyn, I see you. My God, the Holy Spirit has come to lead and to guide us. And he didn't send the Holy Spirit for nothing. Oftentimes, my God, people of God, we as the people of God, we know the unctioning. We feel the unctioning of the Holy Spirit. But sometimes, my God, the Bible says we grieve the Holy Spirit. And how do we grieve the Holy Spirit? We grieve the Holy Spirit by going against the unctioning, my God, that the Holy Spirit is putting on us. But this morning, as I share with you what the Holy Spirit has come to do, the Holy Spirit, my God, has come to give you truth. The, the Holy Spirit has come to comfort you. The Holy Spirit, my God, has come to lead you and come to guide you. The, the Holy Spirit has come to dwell with you and be in you, my God. The Holy Spirit has come to make sure, my God, that you get to the place that God has called for you to get to. The, the Holy Spirit, my God, will come to, my God, give you instruction and encourage you, my God. I'm challenging you, my God, this morning, that when, my God, the Holy Spirit comes upon you to lead you, my God, to do a thing. As a matter of fact, some of us, my God, maybe have not even received the fact that the Holy Spirit wants to come and lead us. I'm challenging you this morning to open yourself up to the Holy Spirit, to what it is the Spirit wants to do in your life, my God. I'm challenging you, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. As I've already read the scripture about you becoming more and more like Jesus Christ, I'm challenging you, my God, to accept that challenge, that my God, as you become more and more like the Lord, that the Lord will 
will allow you to reach my God, your potential, allow you to do what it is he's called you to do, that the Lord, my God, will help you, my God, to experience the fullness of what it is that he wants to bring into your life. I'm challenging you, my God, that you recognize that you are not here by the, by yourself. You're not in this place by yourself, but my God, God is here with you and he will never leave you, my God, so you know that you can walk and do what you need to do, my God, with courage, and my, not just with courage, people of God, but you can walk out with boldness and, and not come on bragging, not with pride, oh my God, but with humility, with holy boldness, recognizing that God is the only true friend that you got, hey, glory to God, I'm challenging you this morning to step out on faith, my God, to all the things that we've talked about over these last few days, that you will begin to build your house, build the house of God, build yourself, and my God, help to restore one another, my God, that you, oh, glory to God, that you will change direction from where you were going in 2021. Oh, yeah, we're just a few days into 2022, but I need you to accept the challenge, to change the direction, change the way you've been talking, and change the way you've been walking. What are you saying, Pastor Tina? What I'm saying is, my God, that you will have a different attitude about, about your church, about your house, about your man or woman of God, about what God is doing in your life. And every time, my God, something negative comes to your mind, please don't allow that thing to come out of your mouth. And then, my God, I need you to ask God to take that negative thing away from you. Glory to God. And, oh, my God. And ask God to help you. Glory to God. To speak words of encouragement and speak words of motivation and speak words of consolation and speak words of comfort. Oh, God. Yes. And if you can't find, my God, anything positive to say, oh, my God, I challenge you to keep your mouth shut. Matter of fact, just keep your mouth closed, Lord to God. And pray to God, my God, that he changes your cynical mindset and allow you to, my God, think on the things that the Holy Spirit will, my God, bring to you, my God, and glory to God. As Paul is talking about walking, my God, worthy of the calling wherewith God has called you, my God. Oh, my God, in those situations, my God, where we've been gossiping and backbiting and, my God, talking about one another. Let it be, my God, that you change your direction. Glory to God. Yeah, I see you, Holy Spirit. I see you, my God, spiritual GPS. I change your direction. Glory to God. Don't do my, my God. Don't let my see God. Not talking about them, but listen, the Bible says we need to restore one another. Come on in here, somebody. There are some things that you can do that you can say, my God. There's some, there's some, the, some bridges, my God, that you can help men, but by simply helping to restore, my God, one another. The Bible says you restore them in the spirit of meekness. You rest restore them, my God. Considering yourself, my God, lest you be tempted, what the Bible says. The Bible says you bear one another's burdens. I'm challenging you personally. I'm challenging you, my God, as I have bared many burdens of others. I, I want you to bear somebody else's burden. Now, I want you right, to recognize, my God, that God is working some things out in somebody that even you don't understand. Come on, with your smart self, with your educated self, with your sanctified self. Even you don't understand it. Allow God to work that thing out, my God, in them. And you pray, my God. Yes, glory to God. You pray. Bear one another's burdens. The Bible says, and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's found in Galatians 6, 1 and 2. Yeah, I didn't make it up. My God, can you, will you accept the challenge? <laughs> glory to God. Will you accept the challenge? Yeah. We have a challenge. We have a challenge, my God. We have a challenge, my God, to, as, we, as we build the kingdom of God, we build the house of God. Yeah, we have a challenge to one another. We have a challenge to one another to make sure, my God, that we are accountable for one another. I know people don't like that word accountability, but we have a challenge to one another. I have a challenge to be accountable to you, my brother and my sister. And you have a challenge to keep me accountable to the word of God. Paul said, walk worthy of the calling. Oh, yeah, if we profess to be men and women. Oh, yeah, we have a preparation. We are prepared now. We are ready, people of God. Oh, yeah, I hold you, I hold you accountable for what it is that God has given in your hands and what he said for you to do. Yeah, what is that walk? The walk is to walk worthy and holy, acceptable unto God. Yes, to walk uprightly. You can hold me accountable to that. And if you don't see that, you just say, Pastor Tina, what's going on with that? What's going on with that? Is that all right? It's not judging. It isn't judging. There's a, there's a scripture in the word of God. It's, uh, 
I don't know where it's found exactly, but but the, the Bible says when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the to the face. Whoa. Oh, that's in Galatians chapter 2. He said, I was stood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For there, before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Yeah. He said, but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew, livest after manner of the Gentiles and do not do as the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as the do the Jews? He said, I came to his face. Isn't that something, Sister Donna, how the Bible says people come to people's faces and then challenge them, not judging, but by the word of God. But how we hear, we go to everybody else and we tell everybody else about the situation with somebody else. But I, I believe the word. If you have a problem with someone, you go to their face. That's how we build up the body of Christ. You go to their face. And you, you ask them about what is going on so you can get an understanding. We're going to change direction in 2002, people of God. 2022, we're going to change direction. And we're going to do something different because the Bible has instructed us, the Lord has instructed us to build, not tear down, not to destroy, not to uproot, but to build. So we have, a, so this is a challenge. The challenge is to, to, to challenge us to withstand people to the face. The challenge is to stop backbiting. The challenge is to stop gossiping. The challenge is to instruct men and women in the truth of God. Instruct them in the way of the Lord. That's a challenge. The challenge is to help. The challenge is to love. The challenge is to be a true friend. The challenge is, my God, to build the body of Christ. The challenge. I'm challenging you this morning. Yeah, the challenge is, yeah. Paul, Paul made a personal challenge. And that's what I'm doing for us this morning. And not only was that challenge personal, but that challenge was powerful. And I want you to recognize this morning that, that even that Paul is saying, I'm not challenging you to do anything that I wouldn't do. And I'm not as well. So we are challenging. He is, he was challenging the church. I'm challenging the people of God that every in word and in deed and thought and plan and our action, that we will do what God is calling for us to do as we build the body of Christ, as we build our houses because we can do it. He says, he said, this is he says, not hard. He says, I'm, I'm challenging you to walk worthy of the, of the vocation, the calling where which you were called. Walk around. What that mean? That means just, 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 just regulate your life after the calling that God conduct your life of the way God has called for you to conduct it. You know it, right? Right. Ready, set, go. We read about it. We positioned ourselves for it. And now it's time to do the work. <laughs> you know, it. it's not like you don't know. Just Every day, walk worthy of it. It's not hard. It's not hard. Oh, yeah, it's not hard. Live, live our lives in a way that God is well pleased with us. How about that? Oh, yeah. We're living our lives, people of God, in a way that God is well pleased with us. So there's a challenge this morning, and I hope that all of you will accept that challenge as we build the body of Christ, as we, this year is going to be a year of building people of God. We're going to build many things. We're going to, we're going to build our house. Our, our, we're going to build our churches, our physical churches. We're going to build our bank accounts. We're going to build health. We're going to build all our mindsets. We're going to build our mental capacities. We're going to build our reputations. We're going to build all sorts of things. I, I see us being fat, fat. Fat in the things of God. Yeah, some people think that fat is not good, but I believe fatty is good. We're going to build ourselves until we're fat. My God, fat in the things of God. The Lord just simply wants us to line up to this word. When we line up to his word, we shall receive all the great blessings that God has for us. Will you accept the challenge today? Accept the challenge to build. Accept the challenge to walk worthy. Accept the challenge to do what God has called for you to do. As now we know, listen, we're, we're in the meeting we're in the meeting and now you've got some walk, some marching orders, <laughs> walking orders. You've got some walking orders. Let's do it in 2022. Father God, I bless your name. I praise you, oh God, for who you are. I thank you, Lord God, that you are mighty and powerful. And I thank you, Lord God, for this challenge you've given to each and every one of us to live the kind of life, oh Lord God, that will be that you will be glorified in. And Lord God, that the people of God will be blessed in. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to have the evidence, God, that we need 
that people will from all over, God, will know who you are and how powerful you are in our life, oh Lord God. Help us, God, to know what it is, God, to that our lives will line up with the word of God. God, we know the word. God, bring the word back to our remembrance, God, and not allow the enemy to come out and, and suck it out, oh Lord God, to, to allow the wind to whisk it away, Lord God. Not allow us be, to be confused by other doctrines, oh Lord God, but allow this word to penetrate our hearts and our spirit that we might be a changed people. And not only that, Lord God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that you sent, Lord God, to continue to lead and to guide us into all truths, to comfort us and to encourage us and to lift us up, oh Lord God. And thank you for the Holy Spirit that is with us, God, at all times. We bless your name, God, right now for what it is that you are doing, what you shall continue to do, Lord God, as we now have our marching, our walking orders to do what it is that you've called for us to do for this time and for this season of our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And bless the Lord. Amen, people of God. God is great. He's mighty and he's powerful, but he's chosen you. He's calling you, you, every one of you, every one of you to do the work. And when you do the work, I'm telling you, we all will be blessed. He will be glorified, but we'll all be blessed. I love you with the love of Jesus. You have a wonderful day. You go in peace.